During the surprise of the 1819 season when Eric Ten Hag and his young Ajax defied many odds qualified to the semi-finals of the Champions League. Also included the matches won by Ajax against Real Madrid and Cristiano Ronaldo led Juventus. This impressive run made Eric Ten Hag turn from a new manager into one of the sought after manager in the football world. This Ajax team was so good that some of the players that were considered as world class got on to be nominated in the Ballon d'Or. The likes of Matthias Delight, who won the Golden Boy Award in 2018 and the Copa Trophy in 2019 as a defender. One of the Man United's highest priority target, Frankie De Jong, certified his name as one of the best midfielder or registered by voter as the midfielder of the 1819 season Champions League. And the main man himself, Dusan Tadic, who was a mass signing but turned out to be a serendipitous addition to the young Ajax team, as Tadic enjoyed his best playing slash scoring season with 56 appearances, scoring 38 goals and 26 assists. Those numbers are really mental. Fun fact, his one goal and two assist performance in the second league against Real Madrid made him the ninth player to obtain 10 over 10 rating from the French football newspaper. Of course, never forget the goalkeeper who I'm very convinced had very different understanding of the word goalkeeper that he hardly played as a keeper, Andrea Onana. And finally, we stop by the man that got overlooked due to his bad decision by joining Man United at the worst ever period, Donny van der Beek. What is up ladies and gentlemen, I'm Marvin, codename CM, welcome and welcome to the Code United channel once again. Donny van der Beek in his Ajax days were meant for something great, and the appointment of Eric Tana as the Ajax head coach certainly further evaluated his importance in the team. Unfortunately, with his great performance earned the move to a bigger platform by accepting the transfer to Man United, in Man United, lacking of playing time and the whole mess in terms of constant management changes resulted Donny van der Beek fall to the absolute downward spiral. Even with the appointment of his former and current head coach did not help him too much with his overall position. Recently, with numbers of news stating that Donny was most unlikely to stay in further season, Donny may have made one of the worst decisions in his career. But how was Donny performing before his underpleasing move to Man United? How good was him in his IS day and why he failed miserably in Man United? In this video, we will be looking into his story on his Ajax career, parallel with the Eric Tana arrival, his rise to prominence during the 1819 season, and his off-the-cliff fall in Man United. As usual, do please subscribe to this channel if you enjoy this content, as each of your subscriptions will be a motivation for me to upload new content, and ring the notification bell for every new upload. Let's cut to the chase, and here we go. Donny van der Beek, together with his Dutch known teammate Frankie Dion and the lead, came through the famous ISU program, was seen as a young and highly talented team. While under Marcel Kaiser, who shamefully failed to let Ajax to get past either UEFA Champions League or the Europa League qualification match since 1990-1991 season. But the final nail in the coffin was the lost penalty against FC20 in a cup match. This incident led to Marcel being let go and made the appointment every ten Hag during the 2018 New Year. Although this IS team was extremely young but was wild as too talented to be ignored, and they also lacked the pushing factor to help them overcome the hump. The introduction of Eric Tana certainly made that a reality. Ajax, after Eric Tana moved in the midway season, ended as a second place in the Eredivisie, and Donny ended the season by appearing in 39 matches, scoring 13 goals and 6 assists. A respectable numbers. Following the next season was a milestone for the Ajax team and Donny himself. Every time now with the addition of Dusan Tadic who by the way was a left winger that shunned out by Southampton but revived himself as an amazing force 9 player, made Donny move much advanced closer to the opening goal as an attacking midfielder. This move alone allowed Tadic consistently drop off the full run line to receive the ball close to the midfield and Donny's smart movement who will make the run in behind the defence led by Tadic. Besides that, with De Jong move from the back to the midfield as a deep lying playmaker helped Donny able to make a much more forward runs. This 18-19 season with the brilliance of Eric Ten Hag involved the Ajax team to a dark horse contender and the players become world classes. That season Ajax not just placed first in the era divisie but had a remarkable run to the semi-final of the Champions League. But Ajax actually had a chance to make history by entering into the Champions League final. 
As against Tottenham Hotspur at home, Donny van der Beek scored the only goal had basically allowed the Ajax to go back to their home ground with all the momentum in the world. Furthermore, with the light as Ziyech, first half goal should cement Ajax history. But with the unusual performance by Lucas Moura, second half hat-trick broke the Netherlands team hard and ended their Cinderella story. As for Donny van der Beek, he finished that history-making season by appearing in 57 total matches, scoring 17 goals and collected 13 assists. In the 1920 season, Donny did not fall from the disappointing last season, but got even better. He had a total 37 appearance with 10 goals and 11 assists, recorded his double digit in goals and assists in a consecutive season. However, something major happened that made not just football, but the whole world on hold. We all had an eye on a rapidly spreading virus called COVID-19. This pandemic could be categorized as a nullification of the whole 1920 season for Ajax because at that time, the Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte announced the events that require a permit are forbidden until the 1st of September. This meant that Ajax, who were at the first place at that time, maintained their position but was not crowned as the champion. Being enjoying multiple success, winning one Eredivisie champion, one Dutch Cup and Super Cup, Donny decided to take his talents to another level. On the August 30th, 2020, it was announced that Ajax reached an agreement with none other than Man United with a fees of £35 million plus £5 million add-on that brought up to £40 million in total. And that's where everything went horribly wrong. Initially, Donny signing with Man United is a head scratching moment as the manager for Man United, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, at that time did not view the Dutch manager as his top target but rather wanted Jack Grealish. In fairness, it was even more confusing given Marcus Rashford was the first choice left winger for Man United. Besides that, Bruno Fernandes, who joined earlier that year, was the first choice for the 10 spot for the team as well. Donny van der Beek although scored on his competitive debut on a 3-1 loss against Crystal Palace, his first season was nothing short of dreadful. As very obvious, Oli did not favour Donny or lack of knowledge how to use Donny in his counter-heavy playstyle. Donny finished his first season appearing in 36 matches mostly as a sub, scoring 1 goal and 1 assist. In the next season, 21-22 season, with the Red Devils did not have any positive changes whatsoever. But funny enough, in what turned out to be the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer final matches, a 4-1 humiliating loss at Watford, Van der Beek was subbed in for only the third time in the 12 Premier League matches, scoring his second and last Premier League goal for the club. After Ole sacking, matters did not improve as both caretaker Michael Carrick and interior manager Ralph Rennick did not play Donny much as he had played a total, I'm not joking, 9 minutes playtime. 9 minutes. Wow. Man United paid Donny to train and warm the bench. With lack of playing time, the frustrated Donny eventually requested to loan out to Everton. Despite his move would have him more playing time, his time in Everton did not pan out as planned. Strings of tight problems and loss of confidence see Donny manage only appear in 7 matches and scoring 1 goal. But coming this season, many views should be his saving grace for Donny as Eric Tenard, the manager that made him his name mark on the map, appointed to be the Man United head coach. With familiarity and understanding of Eric Tenard play style, Donny could benefit from those factors a lot. But this did not happen at all. Donny still remained a lot on the bench most of the time and some reported that Eric Tenard was shocked by his low confidence on his own ability. To add more pain to his miserable career in Man United, during the match against AFC Bournemouth, he suffered a horrific knee injury that sidelined him out of the season. To summarize that what happened to Donny after joining Man United, one contributed to his downfall after obtaining so much success in Ajax. Even worse that, four different managers choose not to play him consistently. In my opinion that it can be down to several factors. First of all is the timing of joining Man United. From the end of Mourinho Man United era in 1819 season was start of the internal cracks. Only early success in 2019 was more of an emergency CPR to a fielding squad. And in 21-22 season was a full bomb burst internally that all kinds of bullshit happened. During that period, a lot of quality players suffer and Donny did not avoid other that circumstance. Domi can be viewed as a victim under Oli terrible management, especially on a tactical play style to multiple changes in manager had the squad failed to get a consistent identity. Another major factor was Donny's own play style. Donny was the definition of Renditor or Space Interpreter, player where they like to attack the opponent with clever off the ball movement and track any space left behind by the defenders. 
Take Thomas Muller as the most well-known example. Unfortunately, this playstyle requires creative movement as a team and works well under high possession team, whereby Man United at that time did not contain such quality, hence Donny unable to perform as his best. Also, Bruno Fernandes was another major factor that hindered Donny's progress, as Bruno although may not possess the spatial awareness sense like Donny, but Bruno made up with his needle trap passing and overall playmaking to which fitted the counter-attacking heavy Man United. In short, Donny van der Beek with injuries and rumour not staying in Man United, I hardly see any future for him in the Red Devil shirt. Right now, I only hope that Donny can get well soon from his injury and who knows, maybe he can go on to find his groove and rise back to his IX form again. That's the end of the video, what do you guys think? Do you still see Donny van der Beek can still remain as a Man United player? Comment down below so that we can have a discussion. Hope you all enjoyed this video, I will see you all in the next one.